CrimeThink recently published a pamphlet entitled Bounty Hunters and Child Predators Inside the FBI Entrapment Strategy. This video seeks to give an overview of the ideas contained therein. But first, what do you think of when you hear the word anarchy? Many, whose definition of the word is inferred only through the filter of government school indoctrination and lamestream media talking heads, may associate it with chaos or a might makes right scenario. In reality, the word anarchy comes from the Greek word anarchos, which literally translates to without rulers. Or to phrase it another way, no masters, no slaves. It's the idea that you not only have the ability, but the right to govern yourself. Yet decades of misinformation has caused the word to have such a misconstrued meaning, caused Joseph Sobrand to quip, the measure of the state's success is that the word anarchy frightens people, while the word state does not. It's important that we're on the same page about the definition of anarchy as it's used extensively throughout the document FBI Entrapment Strategy. As noted by Terence McKenna, language is the most critical thing necessary for the continued evolution of humans. The ability to accurately communicate information, ideas, and feelings makes exchanges once vague, understood, and lessens the asymmetry of information. Moving on, the main thrust of the FBI Entrapment Strategy is to engender a security culture to safeguard yourself and your associates, thus making it less likely that the ideas you proffer are misrepresented by FBI employees for political gain. The authors of the pamphlet correctly point out, as anarchist values and practices become increasingly central to protest movements, the authorities are anxious to incapacitate and delegitimize anarchists. Why? Because the idea of self-government threatens the status quo. Quite literally, if we each realize that we own ourselves, and are thus free to act so long as we don't initiate force, the need for an external government is non-existent. Order would still exist, but it would arise not from a top-down, one-size-fits-all dictate, but spontaneously, from the bottom up. It comes down to incentives. And the incentives, according to which FBI employees are acting, are perverse because they're sheltered from competition. As is noted in the FBI entrapment strategy, agents get funding and promotions based on successful cases, so they have an incentive to set people up, but why go after challenging targets? Despite a lofty mission or the idealism of some new recruits, FBI employees, like all political actors, are incentivized not to satisfy their customers, but to grow their sphere of influence. If no real crime can be found, it's manufactured through strategies like entrapment. If there aren't enough real criminals, more actions that harm no person or property are deemed illegal. That's why it's crucial that you make transparent your peaceful tactics, educate others, and highlight the actions of those who are acting in the wrong. After all, it's the MO of FBI employees to use fraud and the initiation of force for their own gain. As is noted in the FBI entrapment strategy, rather than go after well-connected activists who would then be able to rely on a supportive community, agent provocateurs pick on the most vulnerable people they can find, the lonely, the trusting, the mentally or emotionally unstable, people who lack close friendships or life experience. The point is not to catch those who are actually involved in ongoing resistance, so much as it to discredit resistance movements by framing somebody, anybody, as a dangerous terrorist. The aim of the FBI and corporate media is to ensure that when people see a masked crowd that refuses to kowtow to coercive authority, they don't think, good for them for standing up for themselves, but rather, oh no, a bunch of terrorist bombers. Recently, just prior to the kickoff of the NATO summit in Chicago, a trio of individuals said to be in possession of Molotov cocktails made headlines. Yet they, as happened to others in 2008 just prior to the Republican National Convention, were supplied the idea and ordinance by FBI employees. But for the actions of the FBI employees, such a scenario wouldn't have unfolded. Those arrested were painted as anarchists, and the so-called news acted as a shield to focus attention away from the systematic violation of rights done by police on the ground. As the FBI entrapment strategy points out, this kind of proactive threat creation enables FBI agents to prepare made-to-order media events. Such tactics have historically been employed by governments. In 1993, Waco, Texas area media was given the heads up about a big event that was soon to happen down at the Mount Carmel complex. Law enforcement personnel were hoping to gain positive press after their botched handling at Ruby Ridge. However, the situation in Waco soon morphed into an incident that only reinforced and made more clear the failure of the top-down centralized provision of law enforcement. Unlike supporters of the so-called War on Terror, 
a misnomer if there ever were one, the authors of this document recognize that not every political target can be safeguarded, instead noting that our only hope is to mobilize a popular reaction against entrapment tactics. Yes, the court of public opinion is crucial. The world isn't as scary as purported to be by FBI employees who again, based on incentives, thrive when such a mindset permeates. There are more good people than bad people in the world. Continue to have conversations with those in your sphere. One mind at a time, the belief that an arbitrary external authority has a right to control one's life will be shed. No longer will codified double standards exist. As the authors of FBI Entrapment Strategy noted, always listen to your instincts. Eventually the bad idea of the state, and with it, the enforcement arm of the FBI will erode away to be replaced by institutions based not on a claimed legitimate right to initiate force, but on consensual interactions. Trust yourself. Live free. You'll encourage others, maybe even some currently employed at the FBI, to do the same. Cops with banjos. Cops with banjos. We're gonna pull you over just because we can, Joe. Cause I'm the man, Joe. And that's the plan, Joe.